Hey folks, your OS Reviews. You're watching our retro look back at the Panasonic Lumix. This is the DCM TZ5, which is a <clears throat> relatively popular point and shoot digital camera that came out almost a decade ago, so it's been quite a few years, but it still offers pretty good performance, so if you can get it for cheap online or maybe as a used product, uh, it still makes sense to pick it up for you know under $60, for instance. It features a 10 times optical zoom, which is pretty good if you're getting longer, uh, long distance shots, maybe stadium shots, if you're capturing far away landscapes, and it's pretty easy to focus as well as get used to the UI on board, which I'll show you guys in a moment. Otherwise, the build quality here is also top notch. It's made out of this uh, aluminum and uh, steel material that makes it feel extremely sturdy. And there is a repositioned grip, which is a synthetic leather material that makes it very easy to hold as well. The front features access to a xenon flash. There's the lens um, as well as in kind of an autofocus light. And the top features access to a single or a mono mic. If you're recording video, it does record uh, up to 720p video files. And there's also a mono speaker on board. There's a pretty typical scroll wheel that you can use to go through the various modes, such as intelligent auto, as well as regular auto, video, and so on and so forth. There's also a dedicated power on off switch, a key for zooming in and out, and a two-stage camera shutter key for focusing and taking a shot. And there's also an additional um, kind of a e-zoom mode, which zooms all the way into the furthest setting that the camera can at once, so that you don't have to keep on pressing and holding on this until it reaches that maximum zoom level. You can see that it's a fairly uh, bulky camera by today's standards for a 10 times optical zoom, but back then it was extremely compact, and this one actually was still made in Japan instead of China, so it does have you know pretty good attention to detail. Behind the battery cover here, there's access to a full-size SD card slot for reading memory. There is a very limited amount of built-in internal storage, able to take around five images before it's full, so you definitely need your own SD card. And there's also a rechargeable lithium-ion battery. The side features access to a port that you can use for AV output, as well as a, you know for converting it into a analog signal for RGB and it comes with those cables inside the packaging and the back featured access again to a grip for holding the camera and there's also one for going back and forth between taking images and viewing back your images. Finally there's a typical four-way navigation toggle with an OK key as well as a display key and a Q menu key that also dubs as a delete key when you're viewing back your images. The screen itself which is actually pretty vibrant and bright is a high definition panel that can also be changed in terms of orientation although this is a software thing that you have have to go through uh, in the settings to adjust rather than expect it to happen because there isn't an accelerometer built on in. So if we take a quick look at the UI by powering this on, it's actually pretty speedy and uh, responsive all in all. So from here I can also zoom all the way into my images up to 16 times, and again the display here actually offers pretty good viewing angles and it's fairly bright and saturated. Uh, of course for your best results you do want to view it back on a computer or a monitor display, but for the purposes of some quick looking at your shots after you've taken it, um, it actually works quite well. So from here I can tap on this uh, OK key again to go through a slideshow. I can trim or resize my images directly. I can reset the timed and date stamps on here. I can turn the mono beep speaker on or off. I can also adjust the monitor brightness. The, I can set a timer for this. So all these things can be directly changed and it works fairly well. Um, otherwise, again, tapping on Q menu, I can delete the single image or delete multiple images all at once. If I want to look at more than one image at a time, I can actually zoom out and uh, that allows me to take a look at this uh, more typical thumbnail view of all my images to zoom at multiple levels all the way out and as well as all the way in into a singular image, for instance. So going back into the actual interface uh, or the viewfinder mode, you can see your images uh, are presented in front of you and this is actually very fast to focus as well, so it just takes a few seconds. It's continuously focusing even for video, which is nice to note, so you don't have to keep on manually tapping on a key every once in a while when you're shooting video, for instance. And although video quality is decent, it's really not the star of the show. The emphasis on here is still on taking physical images. Battery life is also extremely good and the camera goes into a kind of a standby or shuts itself off to conserve battery after you don't use it for a bit of time. And uh, other things that you can change here includes things such as the picture size, resolution, that goes all the way up to 9 megapixels as the max, and you can also change the aspect ratio, capture burst shots, so multiple images within a snapshot uh, of time, and there's also color modes as well as you can turn an optical image stabilization function on or off, and you can set the mode you know, from just a little bit, mode 1 to 2, which is an extremely high amount of um, uh, image stabilization, so if you're recording video, it's going to try to stabilize that to its best extent. 
Finally, there is a clock setup, which is the same thing that I showed you guys before through the settings drawer, but uh, this one also allows you to also change the language if you want to set this up uh, to use in another country, for instance. So let's get out of this and take a quick look at my images. I can also tap on the display key here to hide all of these settings, turn on a grid view, and then bring it back out with all the things showing on it. So if I want to do a quick image test of this case. It will focus and then tell me the focusing distance and then snap the shot. Pretty fast and also you can see here that it does look fairly impressive. So again, image quality here is still extremely good. Obviously you don't have the most uh, megapixels to work with anymore and of course you can get slimmer cameras now for about the uh, you know same performance but you have to pay a, a bit more price I would say if you want to get a brand new 2016-2017 camera whereas this one already performs great and if you can get it used for a lower price I, I would actually go for it. It works quite well as a digital point and shoot camera. So thanks for watching this throwback retro look at the Panasonic Lumix TMZ TZ5 series digital point and shoot 10x optical zoom digital camera here at OS.